Hello, Planet NordSec. Welcome to this talk, the last talk of the day, full circle detection from hunting to actionable detection. I hope that you enjoy your day and I also hope that you will join us for the panel on detection engineering right after this talk. We'll start with a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Mathieu Saunier. I'm a senior manager incident response at Syntax System. I'm also a core mentor for the DEF CON Blue Team Village. I specialize in threat hunting and adversary detection. I love to give talk and I had the honor to do so at DerbyCon, Blue Team Village, NordSec. This is my second year. Uh, Sector, a few B-sides and very soon also I'll be uh, at the SANS DEFIR Summit. You can find me on Twitter or follow me on Twitter if you're interested at ScoobyMTL. Now let's jump into the subject because we have a lot of things to cover today. So here is the process that we're going to go through today. So this is how, um, it's what I call the full circle detection. And it starts with the idea of what or what you want to detect. Uh, after that, you will need to generate those events. You will need to build your detection. You will, you should share your detection with the community because sharing is caring. Then we're going to go into how we can do some continuous testing of uh, your new and shiny detection. After that, we're going to talk about building incident response playbooks. And finally, how you can train your analyst. So without further ado, we'll jump right in the subject. This is a slide, a small slide, so it give me time to drink water on unnoticed. Um, so we'll start with the idea, or when we do threat hunting, what we call the hypothesis. So there's a ton of places where you can get ideas for detection. There is, of course, the Meyer attack framework. That's one of the good places to start. Um, but other than that, for more narrow things or newer things that comes out, there's Twitter, which is my favorite place to look because it's so dynamic. As long as you follow the right people, uh, you'll have information coming pretty much daily on a detection idea. There's also community like Slack, the Bloodhound Slack. And for those who've seen my other talk, uh, this is the only time I will mention Bloodhound in this talk. Uh, but it's not only a great tool, it's also a great community. <clears throat> Sorry, there's also the threat hunting Slack. And of course, of course, <laughs> a lot of community have moved now to Discord. So there's uh, the Trusted Sec Discord, the Black Hills InfoSec Security Discord, uh, the Blue Team Village Discord. And of course, now uh, also the NordSec Discord that I hope that uh, we'll use to share things uh, for our community as well. Uh, some people prefer to read the InfoSec news site such as Acker News or Bleeping Computers. Um, it's also a good source. I mean, anything really, but again, my favorite is Twitter. Um, so if for this talk, I'm gonna take one example. So our idea will be um, a blog post from uh, MDSEC and it's called A Fresh Outlook on Mail Base Persistence. If you haven't read this article, uh, here's the link. It is a great article made by Dominic Schell. Uh, and the TLDR for this article is that you can create as a user uh, a macro or persistence uh, via email or via Outlook, I should say. And then when you receive an email with some specific keywords, some actions will be performed uh, via VB script. Um, and that's what we're going to use. So here how it looks. Uh, this is the uh, VBA project OTM file. And here's the sample code that we used uh, in our testing. Well, it's actually, sorry, it's not well in our testing, but it also in the article that that's a copy paste of the article. So as you can see, just a little bit below the middle here, you see in string, if the subject of the email is MDSEC, then you will pop a, a box that say Act the Planet, and you will also pop Calc. Um, and in our test, it actually bypassed our EDR, and and we did see the message box and Calc pop. Um, in in 
In the article, they also at the, the bottom, they talk about detection. So there's two key things that you need to look for uh, to detect this method. So the first one is monitoring for the creation or modification of the file uh, VBA project. And it's an app data Microsoft Outlook. And by doing this research or testing this, this thing, I noticed that there's a slight mistake in the MDSEC um, blog post because the roaming part is actually included in app data. I contacted them. Uh, they say thank you, but the last time I checked, it was still not modified. So that's another reason why you should always test your thing and not just blindly apply what is uh, what other people assume. Uh, this is Sysmon ID 11, and we can also monitor for <clears throat> sorry, change or creation event to uh, this registry key here, that is Outlook Security, depending on, on the level. Um, it is activated uh, or almost disabled. So you can run the macro without any user warning or inputs. Um, you can look for that. Yeah, it's Sysmon for us, uh, our EDR add these events as well. So we could locate those events right in our EDR when we perform our test. So when you do your hunting, you will not always find the events that you're looking for. And in fact, we actually hope that we don't find the events that we're looking for, because that would mean that we are probably compromised. So how can you, how can you make, how can you generate, sorry, these uh, events uh, at will? Well, there's a framework called Atomic Red Team, and this is the URL that will allow you to do just that because it's not practical also to, to run these things manually over and over again um, to test everything. So we're going to use that framework. And if you like what you see here about Atomic Red Team, there is a workshop tomorrow and there's I think there's still seats so you can register if you want to learn more. But let's jump into this. So this is uh, how to build an Atomic Red Team test. So this is a test that existed before. Um, as you can see, it's a YAML file and it has a few, um, a few fields, but the most interesting one, I believe, are the last one in executor, so the command. So this one here says that we're gonna add a registry key uh, that is, um, and then the value that we want to add. Then in the cleanup command, we can delete the registry key that we just created. So we're gonna use that as the skeleton to build a detection for our own technique. So of course we change the attack ID at the top, but again, I'm gonna just uh, get to the command part. So here we are adding a registry key, which is the type D word with the value four, and you can see um, just below the command line. Um, and we're gonna also create, if the file does not exist, we're gonna create uh, the, we're gonna, sorry, if, if the directory does not exist, the Microsoft Outlook, we're gonna create the directory, and then we're gonna echo atomic red team test into the file VBA project. So we don't, this will of course create a file that cannot be run, but here we're not really interested in creating a real C2, we're just uh, creating the behavior of that file being created or modified. And then our cleanup command, because we don't want to have these things here, uh, we're going to delete our registry key and we're going to delete our OTM file as well. Uh, these Atomic Red Team, they should be usually run on non-production server or dedicated server for testing. So just uh, something that is important to notice. So as you can see, it's very easy. You start from a skeleton and you just put the command that you would run in, in CMD or in PowerShell, and uh, your test is built. Uh, so this one is for, yeah, I think I put them together now uh, in, in one go. That was just the VB, the OTM portion of it. Now, once you have this uh, and you can successfully detect your action, you will need to convert that hunting that you just did into a detection. 
Uh, we're gonna follow the Google Aunt once mantra, meaning that we don't want to do our hunt every day, every week, or every month. We want the hunt to be performed automatically, and we want to create either um, a, an alert, a dashboard, or uh, a report. So an alert is, is a ticket. But here you need to know that not all detection are alert worthy. And here, maybe for those who are a bit of a Marvel geek, we have Thor, Worthy. Uh, I hope that you get the reference. Um, so this, that, this is also at this, this step that we will refine and optimize the query because this is not really the job, in, in large environment at least, it's not the job of the threat hunter to come with the perfect query and the most efficient query. So you're, um, you might have some specialists to build more performant query as well. This is the step that you would do that. Now, once you have your detection built, it's time to share it the community. And again, there's an open source project for that called Sigma. Um, and this is where you can share your detection logic. And I can hear you. I can hear some people say, oh, but I cannot share. This is intellectual property. And this is where I think you are wrong. This is not your intellectual property. If anything, it's MDSEC uh, intellectual property in this case, because they actually provided the detection methodology for you. So the only thing that you're doing is helping other corporation that cannot, that don't have the same security team or the same power in their security team to do what you guys are doing. So by sharing with the community, you are actually helping some companies that rely on Sigma to detect some threat actor. Um, and there's there's maybe just one thing is that you can share the exclusion as well. So if if you if your detection uh, triggers on things that are normal in, for example, Windows, that you can include there because this is generic. But if it's if it's more about your own organization, for example, if your security product trigger the detection and you whitelist that that you might not want to share because now you're kind of telling people what security product you're using. So that's where I draw the line, the generic thing, what happens in, at the OS level, you should share the exclusion. On the other end, you should keep anything that is more private or intellectual property or call it as you will, uh, private. Creating a Sigma rule is not very different from creating an ART test. So on the left here, we have an existing uh, Sigma rule that is um, to test the application startup in Office. And I edited that and made my own signature. And as you can see, it's almost similar. Uh, and here, what's interesting is the detection part, of course. And we see that we are selecting our registry key and uh, we are looking for, um, for what it contains or that the modification of it. Uh, these tests, and same thing for the RT test, um, I mean, this took me like five minutes to build, and I think that the hardest part was to actually figure out how to build the ID, and I had to read the documentation for that, and, you know, we don't really read documentation, right? Why spend five minutes reading the documentation when we can debug for six hours? Um, here's a bigger view of the same rule because I'm just used to present on big screen, but now I think you, you could read it. Um, again, we're going to look at the second part. Here is the file creation. So again, I looked at the, on the left, you have the detection that was there for safety cats. Um, and on the right, you have our rules and we're looking for the creation or modification of our VBA project OTM file. Again, maybe Two minutes building this, changing the name, changing the uh, the description and all the things. And I pushed those two rules, two detection rules to Sigma and also that um, ART script to Atomic Red Team. They were both accepted. So today, if you're using ART or if you're using Sigma, you, uh, actu you actually have this built in right now. So you would detect this technique and you can uh, test if your defense actually detects when those things are created. And this is again a closer look at the same rule. Um, and here is a little bit of a pro tip.
when you build a Sigma rules, you can use encoder.io to convert your Sigma rule into a search string for your semen. So here you see the elastic query equivalent uh, of what we have. So it's kind of funny to see that 23 ling lines of code uh, is converted into a very short uh, one, one sentence, but that's a little bit how YAML works. There's a lot of things that goes around it. But as you can see also on the top here, you can look for other seam as well, like Splunk, QRadar, uh, ArcSight is, Arc is in there. You can look at ElastAlert and a lot of other formats. So very useful uh, to convert and make sure that everything works. And you can try this in your path. You can adjust, of course, uh, here. Uh, you can test this string on your seam and you need to adjust the field sometimes because you might not call it uh, file.path in your environment. Now that you have a way to test, a way to detect, it's time to make sure that your full detection pipeline is working properly. So we want to make sure that once an event happens on the host, it creates the ticket or it shows in a report or in a dashboard. So one thing that you should do is run your atomic red team often. The easiest way to do that is to use schedule task on Windows or cron job on Linux systems. If you are more advanced, you can use Docker and CI CD pipelines that you would run every night or something like that. Um, you should also put the source system or systems um, in your allow or ignore list because you don't want to create tickets for your um, analyst. Nobody wants to close hundreds of tickets every morning for each detection. And you should also send that to a, a test queue and not in the uh, real incident queue or the live queue, but you need also yeah, last thing is you need also something that will validate that those tickets were created. Now, uh, the incident response playbook. So just to make sure that we are all talking about the same thing, for me, an incident response playbook is a step-by-step -step guide for your SOC analyst. In this case, we're talking about business email compromise incident response playbook or BEC. Right now, I know of two open source frameworks that help you build um, Ensemble Response Playbook. There's the React uh, project that you can find on GitHub at this address. It's built by the same people who run the OSCD project, which built detection, push atomic red teams, and they push Sigma as well. So very close to what I'm presenting here today. Awesome job by these guys, by the way. Um, they made building blocks um, pretty much. So they, they are more at the procedure level. Um, so they would tell you, for example, how you, if you want to, to get PCAP, for example, um, in, in the process level, you'll say get PCAP. At the procedure level, you'd say how to get PCAP in product X, how to get PCAP in product B. They will also be very soon uh, released in July at the Sans Defir. Uh, we're going to release our own playbook, uh, so syntax playbook, and it's more at the process level, um, and it's built on Draw.io, which is an open source um, version of or equivalent of Visio, and we also have Wiki and TextBase. Um, yeah, at process level, I said that. And uh, we put the procedure more in the micro plays. And we call them micro plays, so very little things. So again, uh, what you're going to see in this project is more the build, the big, uh, big step, like get the PCAP. But you won't get how to get PCAP in your specific product. That you can uh, look in the React. And we're actually talking to maybe merge the two projects together at some point. Now. You've put a lot of effort in building all of that. 
you would now need to train your analysts because it's not because you or one of your team member has become an expert in this type of C2 things that everyone in your SOC uh, is now an expert. Also, we know that in the SOC, there's a lot of, of um, a rotation of, uh, of employees. People get promoted, they get in, they get out. Um, so you have a big movement usually in most of SOC. So it's, it's important that the training is easy to consume. I really like to do video and PowerPoint to support that. But of course, when you're during an incident, you don't really have time to go through a video uh, in order to understand the attack. So you also need some type of information within the wiki that you can uh, quickly grab and quickly understand what's happening. But the video is very good for new employees or one, once you, when you release, sorry, uh, a new detection. As a little bonus, you can start automating when you are here. So you can use SOAR, security, orchestration, automation, and response. And there's, again, two open source SAO that I know of. One is called Shuffle. The other one is Walkoff by our friend uh, at the NSA. And the type of things that you can start automating, the easiest one are probably uh, virus total API calls. So I think all the stuff that I know, one of the first thing they do when they receive a file hash, an IP address, a file name, is that they look at virus total. They go to virus total and they search for it. Uh, you can automate that. You can have that information pulled and ready already in your ticket uh, and just to see everything and you don't need to do that thing all over the, uh, every time. For IP addresses, gray noise, which uh, is kind of a reverse uh, threat Intel feed is also something very interesting. And for anything email related, uh, Spam House is a good place to start as well. So with that, it concludes my talk. They told me I was not able to do the talk in uh, 25 minutes. And here I am sitting at 22 minutes. So I, I think a challenge accepted and uh, <laughs> challenge complete, if you will. Uh, so this picture is um, it's a little bit what I, I feel that um, it represents how we, the defender, can actually stand up to the red team if we unite. We are bigger, we far outnumber them, and yet, in most cases, I feel that we are always trying to catch up with them because they share a lot together. All the tools, are the methodology, they're, they, they are... Yeah, they, they share a lot more than the defender do. So this is my call to you to share more things with other blue teamer. Uh, again, my name is Mathieu Sony. You can find me on Twitter at ScoobyNTL. I hope you have enjoyed the talk. I hope that uh, if you are interested in this subject, you'll join the workshop tomorrow. And also you'll join us in a few minutes for the live panel. Thank you very much and have a great day.